Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale with OffTheBeatedPathBeadStore.com. Thanks so much for dropping by my channel today because we're going to be making a pendant that I've never done a video on before, but was in my Beating with Monty's book that came out back in 2015. Now, I look at that book and I just cringe at some of the wording I used, some of the pictures that are in the book, like... It was my first book. I was just doing what I knew at the time to do. So that book, I have no print copies left of that book. So I thought, okay, let's write a whole new pattern. Let's make up for that. Um, so I'm pretty much going to go by the same instructions. So if you have the book, you can definitely go by those instructions. But I have written a whole new pattern with new pictures, new diagrams, whole nine yards for that project. So let's go ahead and look to see what we're gonna need for today's project. So before we get started with the bead portion of what you're gonna need, we need to talk about your thread options. So first things first, the best thread for this project is going to be a 10 pound fire line. You're using bigger beads, it needs to be really stiff, so 10 pounds is gonna work the best. If you don't have 10 pound in your stash, you can use an eight pound fire line. You can use the .006 in the wildfire. If you use this, you don't have to double the thread, okay? But if you use a six pound fire line or you use a .006 in the dragon thread, you need to double your thread. So instead of starting with two yards of thread when you use the 10 pound or the eight pound, you will need to start with four yards of thread so that your needle can go in the center of the thread. If you try to do your project with this size six dragon thread or the six pound fire line and you do not double it, it's gonna be very squishy and floppy and not work out good. So that's the first thing. Along with this, you're gonna need a size 10 needle. Now let's look at the beads you need. So I've got several samples to show you of today's project, but to start off, you're gonna need four color A six millimeter bicones. Your color A is going to go here in the center under this single six millimeter Monty bead. So here you can see I'm using a blue shade for my six millimeter. Um, for this sample here, this one actually uses a crystal double AB for the A bead. I've got another one here. This one uses crystal for the A. I think I've got, yeah, I've got one more here I can show you. This was one of the original ones I made for the book back in 2015. And in this one, which is the same I'm gonna use today, I'm using the same color A as I am the C. So this one has a fun little rose color there. Now, in addition to those four A's, you are going to need eight color B six millimeter bicones. So that's going to be where I've got this green here, where I have this kind of lighter purple on this one, this turquoise color here, and then here it's this lighter color blue. So you need eight of those. You need 12 six millimeter bicones in a color C. So they're mainly gonna go here around the outer edge. So you can see this dark blue, this is C. You can see here, this color is my C. Here is my C. And then again, like I said on the one I'm gonna do today, my A and my C are the same color. You're gonna need some size 11 seed beads. It's gonna take less than a gram to do those. And you are going to need eight six millimeter faceted round beads. So faceted fire polish beads is what you need for the back of your piece. And the only other thing, like I said earlier, is that six millimeter Monty bead that's in the center here. And then in this one, just because I wanted to show you, you don't just have to make a little loop here at the bottom. You can actually drop things um, like a drop like this or a dagger or whatever you want. So you do have options. It doesn't have to be just a plain 
pendant like this. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, I've got my needle threaded and I'm gonna use my color A beads first. So I'm gonna thread on four of these A beads. I'm gonna bring these down and I'm only leaving myself enough tail thread that I can tie the threads together with and pass through a few beads. So about four inches there. I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna come back through all four of the beads again. And then I'm going to tie these two threads together. The great thing about this project is you really can use just about any brand of crystal. Mainly in my samples, I have used um, the crystal that shall not be named, <laughs> and I have used Preciosa crystals. So once you get that tied, you're gonna go through one bead next to the knot. It doesn't matter if I go to the left or to the right, I just have to go through one of those beads. I'm gonna pick up a B, an 11 O, a C, an 11 O, and a B. And I'm gonna take the needle. You can see that my thread is coming out of the top of that bead. So I'm gonna come back around and I'm gonna go right back up through the same bead again to make a circle. Now I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna take the needle and go through the next color A bead here in the center. And I'm gonna do this three more times. So it's a B, an 11, a C, an 11, and a B. I'm gonna make that circle. So I'm gonna come right back through the same bead again. Go through the next color A in the center. And it's a B, an 11, a C, an 11, and a B. Come back around. I've got to do that one more time. So I go through the next A. And it's a B, an 11, a C, an 11, and a B. So at this point, you should have no A's and no B's left on your mat. I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna come back through that again. So at this point, it's gonna look a little wonky, but what we're gonna do in the next steps is going to fix that. We're gonna add the Monty bead now. If you do not have a Monty, you can do a little X of bicones here on the top if you want to, or just leave the Monty off. The Monty just adds some pop to it. So I've got an 11. I have my Monty bead. You can see there I've gone straight through one hole on the back and an 11. So my thread is coming out of the top of this A right here. I'm gonna come across to the opposite A, and I'm gonna come up through that A, and pull. I'm gonna pick up an 11, and I'm gonna go through the other hole of the Monty. So if I hold it this way, you can see there that I can take the needle and go through that other hole And then I'm gonna thread on an 11, and I'm gonna come back up through the A I started with, which is this one right here. And once I finish it, you can see that Monty is centered over those A's. 
Before I go any further, I'm gonna take a needle and thread it onto this short tail thread and go through these A's one more time before I cut this thread. Once you have that thread finished off, now you are ready to continue with the pendant. So coming out of the A here in the center, I'm going to go through a B, an 11 O, a C, and an 11 O. I'm gonna thread on an 11, a C, and an 11. And I'm gonna take the needle and come to the next C and go through the 11, the C, and the 11. And pull this through. Now when you pull this through, we want it to start to dome. So pull it tight and it will look like this. Thread on an 11, a C, and an 11, and come through the next 11, C, and 11. Eleven, C, eleven, and go through the next eleven, C, and eleven. One last time, eleven, C, eleven, and come through the eleven, the C. And stop don't go through the next 11 so at this point this is what it should look like you can see it's not flat now it's domed up and that's exactly what we want if it is not domed you can take and go through these beads again that just means that your tension is just not as tight as mine is now coming out of that C I'm gonna flip this over and now I'm ready for my fire polish beads or my faceted round beads. So I'm gonna pick up a round, an 11, and a round. My thread is coming out of the top of this bead, so I'm gonna come right back up through that same bead again, and I'm gonna hold on to this thread here as I pull, just to keep my bead work tight. And when I do that, I want to lay these six millimeters, I want to lay these towards the center of my piece. They're automatically gonna to want to lay out here. You want to pull them tight and lay them towards the center. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come up through the six millimeter round right there where my thread is coming out. And I'm gonna thread on one 11 and one six millimeter round. My thread is exiting here. I'm gonna to come to this next C bead and I'm gonna come through that bead so that the needle will be pointing towards the beadwork that I already have completed. I'm gonna come through the six millimeter round right here where my thread is exiting. Then I'm going to pass through the 11 and the round that I just added. and then through the next C. So you'll notice that we're not going through any of the 11s here on the C ring of beads. We're only going through the Cs. So now I pick up an around and an 11, and I take the needle, I'm coming back around, so I take the needle and I come down through the round that I previously added, and pull this through. I pass through the C. And then up through the round bead that I just added. I thread on an 11 and a round. I'm gonna make a circle so I come back through the next C, going back towards the completed beadwork. And then I take the needle and I come up through the round right where my needle is exiting. 
then through the 11 and the round I just added, and then through the next C. Thread on around and an 11. I'm gonna take the needle, I'm gonna make that circle so I come back through the round bead again that I just added in the previous set. Pass through the C. And then up through the round. So, so far we have six of these on. We only have two more left to add. So I'm gonna thread on an 11 and a round. I'm gonna come back this way and come through the C. And then up through the round, right where my needle's exiting. Through the 11 and the round that I just added. and then through the next C. So I pick up a round and an 11. I come back around. Come through the C and then up through the round bead. Now at this point, I have all eight of my round beads laid in place. And what I need to do is I need to connect the first round to the last round. So I pick up 111 and I come down through the first round. Right now, my thread is coming out of the last one, and I'm coming down through the first one. I come through the C, and then up through the round again, so that I'm still on the back, and coming out of an 11 here along the back side of the piece. I love this part. To me, this is the simplest part of the whole thing. You're gonna pick up an 11 and go through the next 11, and you're gonna do this the whole way around. Now, if you're using my Yuki brand seed beads, this is going to be a nice, perfect circular shape that you're making here on the back. If you are using Toho brand seed beads, your circle's gonna be a little wonky, and that's okay. It's gonna be on the back. Nobody's gonna see this part, so that is completely fine. Once you get these in, there's no need to go back and reinforce it. You can if you want to, but you're just wasting thread because we just want to pull those beads together. Now, I want to be exiting out of a C, so I'm gonna come through a round bead here and then through an 11, a C, and then I've got to come out of an 11 right after a C. So this is my C and I need to come out of an 11 right after a C. Not through both of them, just through one of the two there. So you, I know you can't see it really great on the camera, but at this point, you don't see, like I've used silver beads here on the back, you don't see those from the front of the piece. They're hidden. This is just to give it structure. That's why we added those round beads. So that's why you can pretty much use whatever you want to the back side. I'm going to thread on an 11, a C, an 11, a C, and an 11. I'm going to skip an 11, a C, and an 11, and then I'm going to go through an 11, and if I go through a C and an 11, whatever, that's fine, so that it looks just like this. It makes a little point here. I'm going to pass through the beads so that I'm coming out of the 
11, the first 11 of the set of two 11s exactly opposite. So let's see, I went through an 11, a C, now two 11s, a C, two, maybe two 11s. Oh, there we go. And a C. And then I need to go through one more 11. Thread on an 11, a C, an 11, a C, and an 11. Take the needle, skip the 11, the C, and the 11, and then go through the beads here along the outer edge so that now we have two points here and here. I'm going to pass through the beads to exit out of this 11 up here at the top. And by going through these beads here along the outer edge as we do this, we're reinforcing it as we work. So I'm coming out of this point 11. I'm going to pick up 11 11s. No, 13. 13 11s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I have 13 11s. I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to come back through the same bead that I'm coming out of so that it makes a circle. Now I'm going to go ahead and go through all 13 beads again to reinforce it. We are going to make a double bail here. So once I go through the 13, I want to come out of the one on the base. And this time, I'm going to pick up six 11s. I'm going to count up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to pass the needle through just the seventh bead here at the top. I'm going to thread on six 11s and take the needle and I'm going to come through that base 11 again so that when you pull that, you want the beads that you added to be here along the front or along the back side. You just need to make sure that they're both at one side. So now what happens is whatever you're gonna put this on, you just thread whatever it is right through the opening there and it gives you just a really nice finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce. So I'm gonna go through the six, through the single bead here along the top, through the six, and then through that base bead again. And at this point, if you're using the right size thread, it should be very tight to get through that bead. I'm gonna go all the way down to come out of this 11 here on the other end. When you get to the bottom, you have a couple of options. The original pattern tells me that I'm gonna thread on three 11s and I'm gonna come back through that same 11 so it makes a little small right angle weave box. If you don't wanna do something like that, then you definitely have the option of adding something to the bottom of your piece. So this one I've used a purple drop and just put some size 11 seed beads there right under it. You could do a dagger, you could do whatever you want if you don't want to finish it off like this. But it's completely up to you because the pendant itself at this point is gonna be right at two inches long. So that will kind of give you an idea of what it's gonna be like on the chain. I'm gonna leave just the three 11s at this point on this one. 
So I'm going to reinforce these beads. And then I'm going to pass through a few beads and add some half hitch knots to finish off my project. So you can see what a quick project this is. And I mean, honestly, it's beautiful. I love this really simple pendant. It's just a lot of fun to me. I think it is just very simple, but it gives you a really nice wow for the piece. So I'm going to go ahead and zap my thread off here. So that now I have this beautiful piece finished. So I will have kits available for this color, this color, and the purple, minus the drop here on the bottom. I will have kits available for these three colorways on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this quick and easy project. This was always one of my favorite projects out of my Beading with Monty's book, just because it's a great stash buster. And like I said, it's very, very simple and just goes great with everything. So you can see here, I've just put this on a simple chain. I mean, that's how easy that is, but you can put it on whatever you want. Again, I do have the three colorways available on my website, off the beaded path beadstore.com. We'll link those below the video as well. And then I also have a new pattern, a very updated pattern that you can find on my website. Again, off the beaded path beadstore.com. I'll put a direct link in the video description box there for you. But the pattern, as always, is in my book, Beating with Montes. It came out in 2015. So guys, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.